Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and today we are going to be exploring what's new in Photoshop CS6. Now, this is a great release with tons of features, and today we're just going to take a look at the top six features that I absolutely love. These are things that just make Photoshop a joy to use, get things done quickly, or open up whole new worlds of creativity. Let's jump right in. One of the things I think is the best is the brand new cropping tools. So when you open up an image and press C for crop, you get great on image feedback. You could start to crop and you'll see things like rules of thirds or the ability to change the overlays for different types of assistance as you draw. Now I typically rely on rule of thirds or the golden ratio and I find this to be very helpful as I compose my image. Another thing that really stands out is the ability to pick a particular size. So when you want to go ahead and get those images sized to send on over to Autorama Pix, you can actually go ahead, choose things like a 5x7, target out the cropping that you want, get it all framed up, and then just uncheck this box here that says delete cropped pixels. A quick check on the apply button and you see the image is automatically sized for that output of 5x7. You decide you change your mind, you can go ahead and switch on over to other aspect ratios or simply just drag through and get the sizes that you want. Look at that great interactivity as you decide to go ahead and crop and rotate and reposition the image. Great overall controls and again all non-destructive right inside of CS6. Another thing I like is the ability to work with skin tones. Now this is very very problematic for many photos because it's usually the area the eye picks up the problems first. Photoshop has a great new command to just zero in on those skin tones and make the change. With an image open, you could choose Select Color Range. And one of the options right inside here is the ability to target skin tones. Just adjust the fuzziness and even take advantage of Detect Faces to further limit the adjustment. And this will make a very quick selection. You can click OK and then take advantage of one of the many adjustments, such as Vibrance, which does a very nice job of adjusting the saturation and the intensity of the color to give you a much more natural skin tone change. Look at how we just filled in that sort of washed out skin on that cold blue day. And I could tweak that very easily so it's ready for printing. That looks great. I'll just choose reselect to load it again. And I'll do a little curves adjustment and put just some simple contrast in there to bring out the hair and the face. And a nice, quick, easy adjustment. Another change that I absolutely love is the wide angle correction abilities. Now, shooting wide has always been a love. I love that sense of perspective, really getting a wide shot, especially with great architecture. It really gives you the grand sense of what you're looking at and brings out things like architectural details or big wide vistas in nature. Of course, wide angle lenses tend to have distortion and the good news is that this is an easy fix. In Photoshop, I recommend that you go ahead and choose filter, convert for smart filters. This will make the filter non-destructive. You can then choose adaptive wide angle. And now it's as easy as drawing a few straight lines. Now as you draw, you could shift click and it will force it to be a perpendicular line. That works pretty well there. And let's just take advantage of some of these other buildings. And notice how Photoshop will pick up on the curve there and I could even shift click to force that to be perpendicular. We could do the top roof here. Again, it automatically recognizes the curve and that's a very easy adjustment. Now there's lots to it here, but you could just keep going right through the image, adding additional lines as you see fit. And what'll happen is that this image will lose all of its wide angle distortion. And you could very quickly finesse the photo. That's looking great. I'll just adjust the scale here, click OK to apply it, and you see just how fast Photoshop CS6 is. Now you might need to do a little bit of cropping or a little filling in there, but that was a dramatic change as all of that wide angle distortion was pulled out of the image. Another favorite in my top six of CS6 are LUTs, which is just an acronym for lookup table. LUTs are often used on professional Hollywood sets to get color accuracy as you move through the post-production process. Well, the cool thing is, is that they are now in Photoshop as well. And what a lookup table does is dramatically reassign colors. 
it lets you absolutely say that this value is always equal to this value, which lets you do some very quick looks as well as color accuracy as you process your photos. Here's a particular image and you'll see just some different looks that ship with Photoshop. And these are very artistic and open up a whole realm of options here, such as the sepia. Plus, you'll remember that you always have blending modes in Photoshop, which allow you to change how that lookup table mixes. I really like that sepia in the overlay mode. And there's a candlelight example. To add a lookup table, just click the color lookup adjustment layer icon, and then choose from one of the many different LUTs. You'll find them preloaded inside of Photoshop. Now, if you are a CS6 customer using one of the suites, you could take advantage of creating new LUTs using a utility like SpeedGrade. I really like that film stock LUT there. Look at how it's just punching the contrast and really bringing out the saturation nicely for some rich drama in this photo. LUTs are super easy to use. You got a whole bunch of presets already in there and you can experiment by adjusting the opacity or the blending mode of the layer. Another choice that's a lot of fun is the oil paint filter. People seem to love converting their photos into paintings, and this is a popular look for end clients. Let's see how easy it is to do. Same thing, I'll choose Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and then I could run the Oil Paint Filter. You see it did a nice job. I recommend you zoom in to 100% so you could really see the details as you work. And then it's just a matter of playing with how stylized it is, giving it a very simple texture, or a much more swirly texture, Play with the cleanliness to adjust the overall intensity if it's a gritty image or a smooth image. You could scale things up to play with the size of the strokes. Adjust the amount of bristle details so it's very simplistic or heavily stroked. And then just play with the lighting settings and the shine to create the overall look. You click OK and it applies super fast which is one of the great options since this is a GPU accelerated filter meaning it punches into your graphics card. Plus, like all smart filters, you could double click and simply adjust its opacity to back it off, blending it back with the original image, giving you a little bit of the photographic detail coming through the painting. And that's a really nice look. I think I saved my favorite feature for last, and that is the three new blur tools inside of Photoshop. They're called the Blur Gallery, and what they do is allow you interactive on-image controls to create artistic blurring. Let's start with this photo here. Let's go ahead and duplicate the layer. So we have a second copy and I'll just run filter blur and we'll start with the field blur. Now field blur adds control points. So I could set a point up here like on the boat and set that to no blurring. Take that down to zero. Let's add another point here towards the back of the boat and we'll set that to zero as well. Now a little bit lower in the water, I could start to turn up the blur and you see that the two fields interact. So as we move this around, look at how the heavy blur and the no blur create a transition zone naturally. So very great flexibility here as you want to tweak. We can put a heavy blur on the water and a little bit of a blur back here on the backdrop while still adding a new pin towards the front of the boat and reducing the amount of blur that's applied. That works great, plus you could apply a little bit of bokeh so you start to get some blooming in the colors if you want to start to see things start to have that color blur that's natural. Look at how the highlights begin to bloom down there in the water. Very, very cool. All right, I can turn that off for a second and take advantage of iris blur. And the iris blur allows you to create a center target. Let's just turn that bokeh down. There we go and I'll just move this target over my object. I could pull it out to create the focus area, adjust the angle, and then use the intensity slider to set the fade. There's the blur, and then just move the pins around to create the transition zone from blurred to unblurred. Remember, you can also combine these. I'll hold on the Alt key and I can move those points freely so I can create my own transition area that's custom. And that looks very, very cool. I'll go ahead and apply that. You'll see it's super fast because it is also GPU accelerated, which is a big push here for Photoshop. There's one more blur filter, but I want to explain that GPU concept. The faster of a graphics card you have in your computer, 
the better Photoshop runs. The good news is, is that many of you have computers that have GPUs that can be updated. And if not, we have tons of new computers available for sale with fast graphics cards. So be sure to check out that option because Photoshop and other applications really take advantage of it. Here's that last blur. And we'll just run the tilt shift blur. And this is a very popular look that allows you to create a transition zone of what's in focus and then drag out the transition area separately for the top and bottom and just adjust. And you see that's pretty cool and allows you to create tilt shift type effects that are very popular when dealing with perspective and angles. All right, that's a quick overview of Photoshop CS6. There's a lot more to it, and we'll continue to have tutorials here that you can check out. I also invite you to take a look at my new book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS6, which you can order here online. Thanks again for joining us. My name's Rich Harrington. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.